Okay, quick disclaimer. We were talking about basketball somehow, and I was mentioning Bill Russell and went to refer back to that, and for some weird reason said Glenn Robinson. Just to let y'all know, I know these players are nowhere near the same category. You know your boy been on the meds because of my surgery, and I couldn't let it go without explaining myself before this shit got out. And people were like, what the hell is he talking about? So, other than that, enjoy the show. Peace. Another day. All right, let's ride. Thing, Cause I'm used to just going into my own shit, cool. and uh, we lit, nigga. We, we, uh, is the is the light red, nigga? Like, yeah. what's up? The light red. We've been going for the past almost six minutes now. One time for the grind, man. Boy, black eye, man. Doing this thing one more time. I think it's thirty two. I think it's thirty two. Uh, who's thirty two? Magic. Magic. Magic Johnson was 32 first, my G. Yeah, for, for you guys that's hearing me, um, and that's my partner, Trent Brooks, who I talked about a lot on this joint, man. What I got up, him on the line. What, 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 what up? Yeah, man, we're trying something experimental. I'm trying to expand all of my horizons and bring out new thoughts and joys to the world by introducing you to a new ignorant-ass individual. <laughs> But he's also hold on, now, now, he, he ain't ignorant. We, he, got a, we, he got a degree. We, he, yeah, he, we, he has a degree. We we gonna keep it. We gonna keep it a, a buck on this. Now I'm ignorant. I have so ignorant tendencies, but you ain't black out for nothing, bro. But you can't just be using words like tendencies <laughs> <laughs> and, and expect somebody to not think it's a cover up for some for you being a whole other type of way. Hey, but just um some background on my bro real quick. Uh, if I leave some now, bro, please let me know. Absolutely. Uh, musician, musician for a long time. He's been spitting hot fire since he was since I known him since he was about twelve. He's been a musician since that time. You know, school band, all that shit. Uh, school, middle school, high school, and then afterwards he went did his military thing for a little while. And now he's on the bigger and better things. He went and got a degree, so I, he ain't too goddamn ignorant. He got further than that <laughs> did. He went and got a degree doing something he loved, pursuing his dream of, you know, doing shit in the music field. So he's, I want to get your title right. You're an audio engineer? Is that the correct title for what you do? Yeah, audio engineer is um, the the best title that most people can look at me as. As for me, I, I still don't use it yet. Until I get a whole bunch more people to actually use that term as such. Bro, what if I told hold on, bro. What if I told you this whole time I forgot to start recording? Aww. How mad would you be? Woo! <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> I mean, well, the group. Hey, so one time for the grind, man. It's your boy, man. Black out if you're from Duval County or blackout if you're anywhere else in the world or in the, the nation of the U.S.'s of A's. No playing this ride, number 32. I started recording this shit already, but I fucked it up because my partner has helped me with this, my boy Brooks. What up, what who, up? Uh, get a, inter- a whole introduction before. I'm going to do it again because I messed it up. But number 32, he says, Shaq, I say Magic Johnson. Um, you know, I like to put the numbers of the episodes with the athletes, and that's athletes. Yeah, real real quick, too. What, um, who else? What you got? I think it was one Glenn Rice. 32 as well? Nigga, did you just hit me with, with Glenn Rice? <laughs> Listen, now Glenn Rice was a good player. Hold on. Glenn Rice, Glenn Rice was a good player for many teams. I think he won a ring in L.A., and I, I know he won rings in L.A., and he may have won some in Miami. And that, bro, 
I've been trying, well, I'm trying now to not go too heavy on the sports situation because I've been killing that shit, talking about LeBron, Michael Jordan, who's greater, who's who's later, whatever, however you want to call it, man. But yeah. listen, we got to stop disrespecting the guys who played in the 90s. And I'm on Facebook with a young, a bunch of young <laughs> fucking fucks who don't know no better about guys who played in the 90s. But people got to understand, just because you don't remember these guys that well doesn't mean they weren't talented. Because they'll be like, oh, them niggas in the 90s Jordan played against and which was trash. But then to turn around and be like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is better than Jordan and Bill Russell. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Bill Russell, one of the greatest athletic minds to ever grace the United States soil. As far as what he did as a member of the Boston Celtics, as, as a black man in Boston, ended up being the first, I think, and I'm going to say only player coach to ever win a championship to be to the point where you got fucking 11 rings and the fucking NBA Finals award is named after you. Phenomenal. But I'm telling you right now, if Glenn Robinson played in the league right now, he'd be Tristan Thompson because the league moves Whoa. too fast. And I don't mean to be disrespectful about it because Tristan Thompson is a really, really good player at what he does. But the way the league moves now, I just he, don't he see him be being... Right. He will be good. He will be good. Don't get... Nah, nah, I know he's better than Tristan Thompson. Nah, that's probably not the best uh, comparison because he was a shot blocker as well. But the league would not... He wouldn't have the same shine he gets because of his pass. You, you know what I'm saying? But they, try, they like to pull that out because of, you know, all the rings and shit. But my thing is this, and this hopefully the last time I say it, you win, you're the best offensive player, you win the scoring title, you won the best defensive players, top five, you make all defensive team, first team. Michael Jordan did that shit nine times in a row. Now, okay. that's best offense, best defense. Yeah. You take the rings out still, that's fucking discussion over. You take out winning three MVPs in seven years. That's right, Nick. I said three MVPs in seven years. That means regular season all-star finals, 96-98. Count it, bitch. MJ did it. And he won the finals MVP in 97. Now I'm done with that shit. So <laughs> I just had to you, – bro, you put me, you brought me to a spot. Glenn Rice was a really good player, really good shooter for a long time, and he was uh, phenomenal for a bunch of teams. So I don't want to shit on him. But when you're talking about <laughs> giving <laughs> – listen, that's uh, – you're talking about – Relating players and numbers, I'm thinking about players, people, like, remember off rip like that. I think he might have smashed Sarah Palin or some shit, Glenn Rice. But, like, yeah. that's, as long as you don't say, like, Christian Leitner, like, <laughs> then I'd really be mad because I still, <laughs> I still hate that motherfucker, and I don't know why. But anyway, oh, man, man. Um, so my man, my man on the line with me, uh, my bro Trenton Brooks, I spoke about him in uh, one of the first few episodes called Trenton Brooks and some other bullshit. And uh, I'm going to give you some background oh, in case man. what we got recorded the first go-around don't work. But if not, you're going to hear this shit twice. You'll be all right. You're just going to learn a lesson two times. So my man has been a musician for as long as I've known him, right? Since about 12 years old, I know he's been writing. He's been writing rhymes, doing his thing. He's been in the band playing the trumpet, other instruments. He's played the drums at church. And he went through band in high school. He did his military shit, went overseas to Iraq. Handle business, spent some time in Japan, California. He's back in Florida right now, and he's pursuing his dream in the music industry as a recording engineer, which I think I still fucked his title up. But, bro, did I leave anything out? Nah, you 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 pretty much uh, was spot on with that. Okay, yeah, I, um, I hope. I mean, I better be yeah. second time around, bro. Like, I would hope so the hey, second time around. Hey. What's hey, up? man, you got to remember, it's a lot of people who probably done repeated a grade just because they didn't catch everything on the first go. Easy, easy motherfucker, so, I, I repeated the grade. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't forget. No. The only reason we, we met because I repeated the, the seventh grade because I was lazy, nigga. <laughs> but, but, but that that would put Yeah, you hurt my feelings, nigga. No, like, that's, that, you hurt my feelings, bro. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I didn't try to... I, that wasn't... That wasn't an intentional jab, because truthfully be told, uh, I, I that actually still forgot hurt. about that. But I still felt that jab. Hey, hey, it's, <laughs> hey, I repeated a grade, too. So, I mean, technically, kind of repeated a grade. High school, you know, still having a, a ninth grade home room to, like, my junior year in high school. So Yeah, that's crazy. Ew. 
Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Damn, you was technically in ninth grade the whole time. Yeah, in a nutshell, I guess you could say it like that, and that was because I was being lazy. Tra- no, nah, I guess doing- it was because I was being lazy. No, nah, I think you were more focused on music, bro. I think that's what it was. Like, I really think you went to school for band shit. And to rap at the at the lunch tables, my nigga. <laughs> hey, hey, speaking of which, and speaking of which, speaking of which, this is a this is a good a good and bad segue. Speaking of rapping on the lunch tables, bro. If you go back, and we graduated from Terry Parker High School, Jacksonville, Florida, right? We graduated in two thousand and two, right? So around that right. time, what was the most popular beat people did on the fucking lunch tables? Who? Let's see. At the end of our 2002 year, it probably would be the clips grinding. All right, so it was that. You see how my weak ass segue game has um <laughs> has has come through right now. And if we're gonna talk oh, about yeah. the clips, of course we got to talk about what's going on. Like I spoke on it a little bit last week, but niggas' new song came out. <laughs> new songs came out, oh, yeah. and new information has hit the streets. Now I normally start with news and shit that I've um that I. When I start my little podcast, but I got my partner on the line, so I save some of the other news, for news for later, right? So with with Pusha T being a part of the legendary rap group The Clips, right, and him seeing right. other people get into it, our man Drake, it was to be expected that he would have a little something in the in the clip, right? That would make sense. He would have a little something in the chamber, if you if you if does that sound right to you, bro? Yeah, it, it, it sounds just about right. Um, my whole thing on it was, you know, as far as, like, bar-wise, no holes bar, he went a little bit below the belt, but all's fan love and war, you feel me? So for what it was that he did, I, I, I mean, hey, you the one that brought that stuff up, and then you tried to, you know, come with the invoice, hit him with the invoice, on 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 Twitter, Instagram, like Petty. Bruh, if you if you are at a high level position of or uh, within a level of good positioning, why would you go and do something like that? Uh what was that uh what was that uh it's a phrase. Never let your right hand know what the left hand is holding. Mm. Uh, something to that effect. And basically what he did was something that the left hand probably didn't agree too well with. Big bank take little bank. So with that happening and basically tried to play push a T like, oh, he's a sucker, he broke, or he really just invoiced this dude for doing what it is he did, it comes to black face. Oh yeah. I- Bro, I wasn't he gonna get to that. I was, <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's. Hey man, look, when you when you when you play in the mud, you're gonna get dirty, bro. And now I don't fault Drake for doing what he did either. I mean, you came for me, and it's just like when, like once you put it out there that you talking about me, and you come in, and I I look at it from Drake's perspective as is like once you talking about I don't write my rhymes and shit, you coming for my livelihood. I, he said something something similar to that. When they asked him about the Quentin Miller shit, like, once you do that, you're coming from my livelihood because this is what I do, right? And my thoughts on Drake is this. Like, anybody who who really sits there and looks at Drake and says, oh, he's trash, he can't rap, he has ghostwriters, I don't think they really listen to his music. For me personally, I listen to the albums and the songs I play when I had the albums, none of them shits are singles. I listen to the B-sides, and some of those songs are like, the, the lyrics and the way the songs are done is like, it's so personal, to me that there's no way somebody else wrote that shit. Like, there's no way right. somebody else wrote Western Road Flows. There's no way somebody else wrote Do Not Disturb or Lower Nose or some shit like that. Now, if he's in a... Like, if we're in the room and I'm writing a verse and I'm like, and I'm going, I'm repeating my verse and you give me a line, I, I'm taking the line because you my bro. We in it, we in there, we all working on the same song. We want the song to come out good. And you throw me a line for a verse I'm writing, that's completely different, right? Yeah. So... But when it comes to songs like that, the songs, to me, that make him a quality, a real quality artist, bro, it's not even the singles. So when people, you know, when they do, when they say, oh, he don't write none of this, I think they, a lie. He probably, and he mentioned this, and I think in the Duffy Freestyle, 
I'm pretty sure he's writing for other people. So for somebody to throw that, and for Pusha T to, to kind of use that, I thought was like, eh, it was kind of weak. But I see that was the jab. Yeah. That was a jab before the hook. Yeah. Well, what uh, what it is that a lot of people really do need to understand too. Anyone and everyone, if you trying to be a rapper, if you are a rapper, whatever the case may be, and this is specifically to those who feel like they follow everything music-related or in the industry. I hate to be that bearer of bad news, but it is a lot of people who are or have a team of writers for songs. It's only very few and far in between who are talented enough and gifted enough to convey what it is that they feel or how they think accurately, effectively, and appropriately through the pen onto a beat. Oh. It's, it's, it's seeing those nowadays is really like spotting a unicorn. If a lot of people actually, again, this is something that those outside of the 90s would rarely have an idea of. But if you actually do, go back, look at CDs, purchase CDs, um, and look at those liner notes. You will, just like you were saying within the episode, yes, you will see, you know, more than one person name within the contributions of writing songs or certain songs. And please don't let it be one that has a sample within it because you're going to start seeing artists that you probably didn't even know uh, the group or the band at all. And, and they have a stake within the writing just because of the clearance of samples. But that right there is just, you know... Me going off on the riff a little bit, but yes, it's nothing out of the ordinary for people to have writers these days. So people just need to snap the fuck up out that. Yeah, bro. And I feel you, I don't feel like it's, you going off on a riff or a tangent, but that's, I mean, that's knowledge. That's from somebody who went to school to be able to work in the music industry, right? So I know I said it on a, on an episode a while back, just like you mentioned, that people don't realize it's, it's the young guys. The young guys that don't realize that, oh, he don't write these lyrics. And it's not saying that he don't write it. It's like he may have help. He may have some help. Because if you look at it, bro, I'm going to tell you like this. When you grow up listening to mixtapes, and I'm, I'm going to make a bad comparison in a minute when I when I do this, when I talk about this rap shit. But for somebody like somebody like Drake, he may be able to get on, right, and get and get on just off his pen and him writing his hooks and his writing his lyrics with his delivery and all that shit and him picking good beats. But that's, there's, there's few and far in between who maintain that for the duration. And when you do see somebody like that, then if you really want to rate an artist based off music alone, then the, then the scale is going to slide. Because a lot of the young people, people in their, I say early 30s to, and 20s and on down, will rate the sales when they rate the quality, who's the, you know, the better artist based on quality of work and music and shit, right? But if you look at it like this... Once you get to the level that Drake's at, it's going to take a machine. You can't afford to fuck up and falter and have a bad a bad album in this era because everything's so marked away fast. Like it went from you being you being have the guy with a bad album to like like five years ago, his album trash, word of mouth spread over social media. It's going to be a little slower. But now in the age of, in the meme era, well, everybody's dying to make the meme. Like the finals is going to be on in less than an hour, right? And soon as that game is over with, there's going to be memes about how whatever team lost, who got dunked on, who got shot on, who didn't play no defense. There's going to be memes out before the game is over with. So in the meme era, an artist in the hip-hop genre, because we're probably, I got to believe we're the only genre that cares about this shit. When you fuck up and have a bad album, it's just going to be out like wildfire. So an artist of Drake's stature can't really afford to have that. So in a way, he's kind of like, it's almost presidential. He has a team behind him. He's the figurehead of what's going on. And he he might not even, even be at the head of the snake. He's the figurehead that you see, but there's somebody behind him even pulling the strings because he has to get funding for all the beats and all the promotion and shit for his album. Now, an album of his stature is going to recoup those funds. 
he's going to make that money back when the album comes out. But in order for him to stay afloat and, and to stay on top, he's going to have to do the shit he does. And that's the only thing about him I don't like. The shit he's doing now, how he kind of switches his flow up to match the flow of these little punk-ass kids that um that are breaking into the rap game left and right and being gone. Like, look how much you hear Lil Yachty's name these days. Look how much you hear Kodak Black's name these days. Look how much you hear Uzi's name these days. All them niggas' careers is almost over. A rapper's like a running back. You get three years, then you out this motherfucker if you don't get your shit together, if you don't stay on top of the wave. And Drake, that are, are just not knowledgeable of, of exactly. what the fuck it is that you're doing. Even, even if you are dope, you mismanage your funds or somebody fuck your money up, right? So when we, re- when we really rate these artists, if we really go, if, if you say top three artists right now in rap, most people going to throw, throw out to you Kendrick, Cole, and Drake, right? Yeah. Probably for the most part, right? So if you ask me who's my favorite, just listen to the music. Out of those three, I'll probably give you, I'm going to give you Kendrick one. Just listen to the music. I'm going to give you Kendrick one. And then J. Cole, or, J. Cole or Drake can go back and forth at two and three, depending on the day, right? But when you right. say, who's the better music artist? Who's the, now who do I, now who do I like, right? right? Based on just bars and hooks, who's the best artist? If you ask me who, who's the best, I'm going to tell you J. Cole because J. Cole is going to make his own beats. J. Cole is going to write his own hooks and J. Cole is going to write his own lyrics. That's why J. Cole music sound the way it does. The album, a lot of the songs sound the same because he does every fucking thing. If you look at the three, when it comes to music, to a song, he's the most complete. He makes the beat. He writes the hook. He writes the lyrics. And the shit sells. And everybody says, oh, it's critically acclaimed. The shit is dope. That's if you just rating. That's if you want to be honest about it. Well, whose music is going to, like, whose music is better? If you're talking about just the lyrics and shit, I'm going to say Kendrick. I- I'll say Kendrick. But but that's just a, one of the points I wanted to get to when people talk about this, this music shit and how they going back and forth. Like, don't don't use it like that. Just, if we're going to do it with a battle, just leave it at bars. Because there's a reason, and this is my bad analogy I'm going to make. And I'm going to piss a lot of people off, especially if I said this on, like, Facebook or something. You know how the people on my feed be, right, bro? It's crazy. They like to argue for days. I would say a successful artist who's consistently put in the top ten, and I'm just going to say rap, right? That artist is Kobe Bryant. The Little Pumps, the Uzi Verts, the um, let's say what's the, the that goddamn crack maybe I can't stand, black youngsters of the world, and um, <laughs> Yachty and them right. Yeah, they're gonna do well and they're gonna make money for a little bit, right? And they may have some money once to exit the game, but at the end of the story, Drake, Kendrick, J Cole, them niggas going to Kobe Bryant, con- you know, category. They go in the Kobe Bryant right. category. All the other little rappers, they go in the Allen Iverson category. And I'm gonna tell you why. Damn. And, and I'm not going and I'm not trying to shit on Allen Iverson, but as a player, but when you talk about who was really popular at the time, right? But who was mm. who was really popular and they put in the work. Now, Allen Iverson had natural, natural athletic ability. He was he was a freak on a football field in the basketball court. He was a charismatic dude. People loved him. Kobe Bryant, naturally, athletically gifted, but he worked his ass off. That's, that's what you hear about Kobe Bryant is his work ethic. Al Iverson. Okay. Al Iverson is talking about fuck practice. Kobe's at practice. He's at practice arguing with his, with his teammates because he want to win. Al Iverson, like, practice? We talking about Practice? That's the difference between a champion and a really good player. You see okay. what I'm saying? I get, <clears throat> I get the level to the extent of what it is that you were talking about. Now, me calling them Irish may be giving them a little bit too much respect, but, 
and, or maybe disrespecting Iverson, but I just want to draw to draw that analogy because the man did what he did and said what he said. Yeah. And, and that's all I'm saying. You're talking about practice. Like, what player that could potentially be great is going to want to go with a ball hogging player like Al Iverson, who takes regular shots, who don't take practice seriously as a fucking professional in the NBA with the amount of talent he had? I'm just saying. Yeah. I I get the analogy to a certain extent. But that's fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, you know, like, Swiftly compared into say a Iverson, I would say it'll be more so like mm, I don't know. It'll probably be if it's something more current, and and you may end up being ready to fight me for this, but probably like either James Harden or Carmelo. That's not bad. That's not that's not bad at all. But it, for me, it was easier to use Allen Iverson because the streets. Liked Al Iverson for right. the, the, what they saw. Yeah, he he had more of that appeal to the streets. Oh, Again, just, just that, the streets. That connection, I can yeah. Like on the surface, they they looked at him as the product. Al Iverson, like just the the baggy shorts, the tattoos, all the jewels, and all this shit, and him yeah. being like, man, practice. Pff, him blowing up. That's that's the reason it was easy for me to use Al Iverson. And why he he got there, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Like you, yeah, he was there. You was on the Billboard chart for a little bit, Takashi. You was there, but are you gonna be looked at as the best? Are you gonna be looked at as the best? Like Pusha T been in the game for a long time. He's done well for a long yeah. time. So we knew when he was talking this shit, he sat back and watched. He was coming for Drake with a full clip. So with infrared, I feel like that was the jab. Then the Duppy Freestyle came out, and then we had. Uh, what's it? What's the Adion? What's the shit? With yeah, the, Adion the, shit? Uh, the story of Adion. The story of Adion with the, the story of OJ beat. Oh, the blackface yeah. picture, bro. So how do you feel? Like I told you earlier, how I feel about. It. How do you feel about the blackface picture? On the real, honest opinion. Hey, honest opinion about it, and, and and the crazy thing about it was when that came about. I'm just like, damn, they got him. But when I first saw the picture, the first thing that I thought of was, damn, is it just me or do this nigga really want to be like Fonte? And, bro, that's what I was going to say. And to be honest, when I first saw it, I was trying to hear the song so fast, and it did the 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 clip or the, the fucking link I saw the first time, it didn't even have the picture on there. So I didn't even see the picture until I listened to it the second time around. And I looked, I didn't pay no attention to it. I thought it was like somebody they had just taking a picture with blackface. And I went right on to the song and listened to it again because I'm thinking about the bars. I'm not yeah. thinking about none of the other petty shit. I was, I looked at a, um, a YouTube video and listened to it. It was, uh, it was Ebro in the morning. And him and Rosenberg yeah. were talking about it. And Rosenberg was talking about how, well, he was a big fan of Little Brother back in the day. And they had the albums, the Chitlin show, the Chitlin circuit and yeah, the Yeah, the Chitlin show. circuit. So that's why today, if you saw, I posted that that status. You know, I was like, hey, you know, two, the, uh, the Chitlin Circuit and the Minstrel Show, 2005, must have been a very influential year for this young man. And that's why I said, if you know, you know, shout out to little brother. For those who know yeah. what I'm talking about, the influential young man, obviously, the person who was influenced obviously was Drake. And... The shout out to little brother, and then the if you know, you know, tied into you know, push your T and his album and all that shit. That's just me speaking in code because I feel like I'm better than people. Thank you for letting that breathe. I wanted that pause to be there yeah. for, for, so people could listen. So you let that breathe, let the pause like, yeah. Thank you for letting this sink yeah. in one more time, play. I appreciate that. And then I came back with what I said, and my feeling is like, listen, bro, we can't, we can't flip flop. Black people look crazy talking about this shit. About how oh he he yeah. went to blackface and all this shit. When most of rap music is is degrading. I talked to old Whoop, Whoop about this shit for about fifteen minutes. Talked to Errol, bro. I'm like, listen, what I don't understand is how everybody pissed off at Drake about this shit. But all the music we got is about drug use, fucking, and violence, and a lot of the movies we watch, doing to our own people, right? And then he do this shit and everybody get up in arms. But when, when Common had an album called Black America again about the black woman ruling the world in one of the songs, none of these motherfuckers no blinked. One. 
No one batted an eye. No one blinked. Nothing. We'll sit up here and argue about Cardi B and Nicki Minaj all fucking day long, but I don't see no black women talking about fucking Rhapsody. None. Which breaks None. my heart. Because she's like the real embodiment <clears throat> of the everyday black woman. But they not fucking worried about her. She they is. worried about her. You little bitch and I, all this other shit is be, about being careful. And with. I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, especially when it comes to that, Rhapsody is my woman crush, like, all out. Only thing I need to do is just have one freestyle session with her. That's it. One freestyle <laughs> all, session with her. All I got to do when I'm in, player, I'm in. That's all you got to do. Yeah. I, 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 I'm dead serious. That's all. <laughs> if, if by any chance she happens to listen to this, that's all I want. Forget the date. Forget the Netflix and chilling and, and, and watching the movies on you. Let's just have one dope session. <laughs> one cipher. That's it. That's just just need. one cipher. And I'm in there. Yeah, that's, that's all I want. She's going to fall in you, love. You know what? Yeah. That you know what? That I'm sounds kind of horrible. Be proud. <laughs> I'm trying no, to that, 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 I, Fuck I'm is and she these bars. No, I got. no, but this is this is why I say this sound kind of funny because anybody else and they like oh yeah you know and she is attractive to me at least they'd be like game man I want to try and smash me just having a session or, or a cipher with her that equivalates to me trying to smash. That's all you need, bro. That's, different strokes, yeah, but it's, it's different nothing, folks. Yeah, different. Yeah, some like Pepsi, some like Coke. I feel you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, but, that yeah, blows she my is, mind. She is the imp- yeah. It, she's a, she she is a, of hell. She is a phenomenal woman. But you better reach out. You better reach and out. I, and, and 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 in response to you know what it is, because you already know it, just like everybody else knows it. Controversy sells. Why does it sell? Because it's controversy, Bro, I, man. I can't. Everyone oh, wants, everyone wants the peace and utopia. But with peace and utopia, nothing really exciting will ever happen. So most people would want for the excitement. So they put those things in order. They put those things in places just for that to happen. But then you have other people who are smart. And they elevate themselves beyond that to where whether most people will notice it or not, they're still getting their light, they're still getting their press, and, and they're still getting their recognition. I so it's it's kind of one of those things. She had a song on um she had a song on um one of her albums, which one was it? Beauty and the Beast, uh called Hard to Choose. If you haven't heard that, um EP from her, I would say go and listen to it. Because basically she's she's talking about all of that stuff. Uh, how is it that she's doing everything that she needs to do and she's not even trying to put herself into the box of being the best female MC. No, 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 no. She no. want to be the Stretch best MC. She. Period. And then another known fact of her is like every dope artist that we would consider and see as a dope artist she has held her own with it. Bro, there I'm, has not been anyone. That's exactly anyone. Exactly what I told old girl the other day. That's the crazy part. There has yes. Yeah. There has not been anyone as of yet besides her who has done that. She's done a song with Gene Gray. She done a song with Rod Digger. She done a song with Big Daddy Kane, Black Thought, Busta Rhymes, Taleb Kwali, uh, Fonte. Abso, Kendrick Lamar. If some people want to say Mac Miller, Mac Miller. I, whatever. But she <laughs> and, and, rap, and Buckshot. Buckshot. She did a song with Buckshot. Boot camp and play. oh my God, did she spaz out on it. And I think she got a song with Styles P too somewhere. Oh, that's Let crazy. me find out. Let me find it. Let me find it. For anybody, her and Jean Grey. Let me get this off real quick. For anybody who doesn't know, what we're talking about Rhapsody is the best female rapper in the world. Fuck how you feel about it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, this young this young lady's been to the White House more than once. And if you get uh, if you have Kendrick Lamar's album "To Pimp a Butterfly," the song "Complexion." 
She's also on Anderson Pack's Malibu album. So when you hear the female who raps on complexion, that's Rhapsody. Just so you know who, just to give you some guys some background on who we're talking about. But oh yeah, she also did a song with Murs. I forgot about that. You see, there you go. But let me let me flip this back though. So what do you think this battle between uh Drake and Pusher, how you think what you think the outcome is gonna be? What you think is coming next as far as these these punches being thrown? What you got? Well, uh I know he ended up embarking a little bit on the truth through Duppy from um what it was about Pusha T and everything that he has done and whatnot. I think he's gonna try and and, and heart more on that and basically I would even go into calling the prediction of trying to do something to where he would want to try and get no malice to response that's just me though that is just me because if, even if you look at the battle or even if you look at this so called beef that is stirring up this beef basically curated from Wheezy <laughs> Absolutely. And the whole Mr. Me Too. 100%. 100%. All of this is curated from that. So you mean to tell me that this beef that's been going on, well, since it's been resurrected, this is this is well over a decade. Yep. And he said it like, oh, all of a sudden, I was cool to come at baby. And he was basically uh, shouting out Rick Ross for how he came out. Um, baby. From Cash Money. So, I mean, like, it is what it is, bro. I'm going to tell you like this. After I went back and listened to, um, what was the name of the song he did? The one that's on YouTube, uh, Pusher. When he was back in Norfolk. The one he talking about, these uh, niggas ain't dying for you. That song, I forgot the name of it. But it's super dope. Oh. I can't believe oh, I forgot the name God. of that song. I, I can't either. And, and normally I would be, you know, spot on with this. It's it's at the tip of my tongue, but I can't. I can't. I can't. It won't come out. the 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 name of the song will not come out, and it's it's like trying to rear its head, but it's not trying to come out. It's all good. But I know what song it is. Yeah, if you look up Lil Wayne or Drake or like Pusha T, Lil Wayne, this it'll pop up on YouTube. But that song, I'm going to say, set it off, and then various interviews he did, because Wayne never really responded. But Drake responded in Two Birds, One Stone. And then years, like a year or so later, Pusha T, he's smart. I'm going to capitalize off this when my album drop. I'm not even going to mention it. It's going to put the song out, and I'm going to let the media do it when they talk about Infrared. But if you listen to Santeria, he talking about the same shit. He's still dissing Drake in that song, too. If you listen to Santeria on the album, on uh, Daytona, he's dissing them there, too. You just got to, that one's more coded. But that's exact. That's got to be exactly who he's talking about. And uh, I'm gonna tell you like this, bro. I think if he responds, if Drake responds to uh, to the story of Adion, Adion, whatever the fuck you call it, I think it's gonna be vicious. Cause I think, I think you know Drake. He hit you with the jab first. Hit you with the jab. Okay, you jab me. I, you know, I jab you back. You throw a hook and come with a haymaker. Cause he don't forget Drake Petty. Like he he, yeah. he was on Meat Mill here for a year and made singles. So Drake's gonna make some money off this shit too. So we, we'll we'll see, man. I think it's gonna be very even by come for the Braves, man. Yeah, but here's the thing too when it comes to that. Like, even in 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 retrospect of him and and the I don't know, I wouldn't even call it a beef, I'd call it a schoolyard. Scuffle with uh with with him and and Meek Mill. Basically, only thing he did with that was just kick him when he was down. He just kicked him when he was down, and and I think Meek ended up getting too much of himself, and he tried to take it light just because of the fact that he was light. That was the biggest mistake that he made. He learned. Hopefully, he has. 
Yeah. So he'll be able to move on from it. <laughs> yeah, that nigga as far as what it is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that nigga has the worst year in his life, nigga. <laughs> he got dumped. He got yeah. he got beat up on record by Drake. He went to jail for some bullshit, yo, me. <laughs> So I mean, yeah, Meek like, Mill need a large yeah, fry, nigga. Somebody got to do something for Meek Mill. He had a he had a bad couple of years, know, bro. Right? Shit. G- yeah, give him a, give him a full month. I, I think next month the Frosties at Wendy's they go on sale. Somebody just need to go ahead and hook him up with that for the for every day of the month. Need a big just one, do that. Bro. Hopefully it turn around. <laughs> need a big one. But God, I can't. Damn. Yeah. But hey. Yeah. But hey, I don't push buttons, bro. Don't don't push the button. If you ain't ready for the response, it's like that's the fit. When you gotta be, when you're in this rap shit, I feel like if you're gonna be out there, you're gonna be a big time rapper and you're gonna be somebody that's confrontational, you gotta have a 50 cent mentality. Like, oh, everybody's yeah. mad at the gunshot, but nobody's seen the slap that led to the gunshot. Like, you can't judge my reaction based on how you came at me. Like, once you hit the button, it's on. Once the, and, once the and switch basically is that's flipped, what it is, flipped. he did. That, that, yeah. So we'll, That's we'll what see. He done, so. And that shit goes both ways. Yeah. So if he come back and he gets real personal on Pusha T, which I mean, I'm petty, I'm going to enjoy it. If he come back and he goes for his head, that, that shit's it, bro. That's, he can't. And, it, and if it is going to be more so, if it's going to be more so personal, I would just like to add some little quick notes for Pusha T just so he knows how to go about winning it. First off, lay off the whole ghostwriter thing. We we we're off that. It's it's past that. Go with all of the beefs that he had within Toronto that 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 are brought about. Ask him about what it was that the, the song Still Fly, the artist who did that one. Not not from the big times. They ended up, you know, making it back in two thousand and and nine and basically he wanted to do the hook or he did the hook and he put the song out before the original artist. And the original artist basically was pretty pissed off about that. So I would say start talking to those people more. You know what I'm saying? Get the get get what you can get from them. Bring all that stuff up. Bring up the stuff within his hometown. Cause if you got a if you got a, a good amount of people that is supposed to be from your home who is on the opposite of where you stand at, that can lead to some sort of a window for that for that victor to be the victim. I feel you on that. Yeah, so that's you what may want to go do. ahead and, and and jump on that. You may have to take a trip to the six, and you may have to take a trip to the six and 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 see what it is. See what it is. Hey, right, well, we'll, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm I can't wait though. It's almost like I'm, like I'm in, how I'm anticipating this finals game today. Boy, I'm, I can't wait. Game one, goddammit. All right, anyway, so, bro, <laughs> what, what else was we talking about? Oh, yeah, the, um, so apparently superstar, superstar drag queen RuPaul, at all seven feet of this motherfucker, <laughs> recently came out and said that in the 90s he was at a party and Donald Trump grabbed... His and her ass. I don't know which one he. I'm. I'm assuming he was her that day. He grabbed her ass and his genitals. Is that the best way to describe it? <laughs> he grabbed the oh, ass, <laughs> the ass and genitals of RuPaul. This is, so, like, I got the surprise of a lifetime. And like, listen. Now I know this man went to a school for business, right? And he's supposed to be an intelligent person by, by business marks, but. First of all, where were you? <laughs> like, where, where were you where there's a seven foot tall black drag queen? <laughs> where were you guys? I, I know where he was. Well, I, I know where he was. I'm assuming it was an industry, a, holly, a New York City party, maybe. New York City, is, it's, it's a different vibe. I love New York City, by the way. So if you there and you're listening and you New York, shout out. I love New York City. Greatest pizza I ever had in my fucking life. But that had to be the shock of a lifetime. And then he was like, he cursed and he ran away. He left the the party, but I'm like, seven feet, seven feet. <laughs> now, I know you like him. You, know, you like him tall and long legged. But God <laughs> damn, bro. You know, uh, most people had that uh, Napoleon complex. So he probably thought it was some uncharted territory that was looking to be 
He grabbed the wrong tree in that motherfucker. <laughs> he reached out and took grab some grabbed the wrong goddamn. He grabbed some yeah. <laughs> I think he grabbed some boy pussy. That's what he grabbed. Oh, man, that's crazy, bro. And I was like, I'm like, is this real? Like I'm, I'm like, oh, why did it take so long? He <laughs> said, why did it take so long? And bro, the only reason it's believable is because. My nigga, you said you grabbed pussy. You, you said you grabbed pussy. <laughs> like, you said, like, like I do this. I don't even wait. I move on them and I kiss them. Grab them. <laughs> like, you you said these words, bro. Was, so quote, I'm like. Quote, you, you pounce on them like the bitch they are, quote, end quote. That, that was the exact words that he said. Hey, bro, uh, listen, man. You my homie and I love you to death. Don't ever say those words in my, in my presence again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel weird, like to, just to hear somebody say that, and that that's crazy because I'm like, hey, they call it, you know, Fox News called it locker room talk, but like, I've been in plenty of locker rooms in my day, and I ain't never said I shit like too. that. Never, <laughs> it's never, never like that made me highly never. uncomfortable. Like that's even if you were regular, you tell me I'm, I'm a, you, you can do it because you're a star. You can do it. I'm like, that's crazy. Like who else are you hanging out with that's doing this shit? You gotta be a sex tourist. I mean, that's probably how you found that's mad man. crazy. Anyway, but yeah, I I thought that shit was bananas, man. I was like, damn, I had to say bananas. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bro, I just thought that shit was crazy. I'm like, you out here grabbing things, man? Come on, fam. You can't you can't do that, bro. I, I guess he's trying to get an adjustment to 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 prison life a little bit early. I don't know. I don't know. That's out of... I don't know. That's out of bounds, man. I got to... Hey, bro, I had a couple more things I wanted to ask you about, man. Then I'm going to ask you, like, a, an important question. Yeah. yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Roseanne, bro. How you feel about Roseanne taking that L? <laughs> Golly gee. <laughs> Ooh. How do I feel about that? Well, mm, I guess the good thing is for some people who already knew how she was for it to finally come out, I guess that could be, I guess it could be, I don't know, somewhat like sadistically applauded because it's like, well, we already knew how you felt, but shit, thanks for, for, for letting everybody else know. And on the flip side of that coin, it's kind of messed up because Again, you just, all of these people who were working on that show, now they got to go back and tell their significant other and or kids, hey, you know, mommy and daddy has just been laid off because the star of the show couldn't keep her fat yap shut. Oh, boy. And to be real, it's like some of the motherfuckers ain't had working a long time, bro. Not to be exactly. fucked up. I know uh, Sarah Gilbert, who everybody thought was dead, apparently was on The View or the one of them. One of them shows where a yeah, bunch of women yeah, sit at the, the table, the talk. Yeah, she was on one the of them talk. shows, and uh, she quickly responded and said, "Hey, these thoughts and opinions do not reflect, you know, everybody else on the show." Which I appreciate her for saying that, bro. And uh, I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad because I watched the show, bro. I, I recently went on the man and watched the show, and I was like, "This shit's still funny." Because as a, as a youngster, I, I fuck with Roseanne. I watched the show. I thought it was funny. And I'm like, yes, show poor people. Show people struggling. Yes, finally. Poor white people like the Bundys. Like, don't just always show black people broke. And it was a real show. They were in a, a small, fucked-up town. Dan was doing drywall work, fixing motorcycles and shit. They had an asshole daughter. Well, they had two asshole daughters and a badass son. Like, this is real fucking life. I'm like, this is real. Like, everything made with children was, which was great, a great show, by the way, as well. That was that was yeah. that was phenomenal. It was cool, but Roseanne hit you in the stomach. Like Roseanne was like real. Like the clothes they wore wasn't shit. Like, they, like every it like it rained every day in Lanford. Like it was never summertime. Roseanne was like a, a it was like that real deal. So I'm like I can I can fuck with. It. I can relate to you know middle class living not having much. I I can dig it. And then when they came back, they were still in the same situation, and everything seemed like it was. It hadn't changed. Like, the chemistry seemed there when I watched the show. So when I found out, I'm like, no, nah, nigga, I'm mad. I, now, now I feel like I kind of want to go watch the other episodes because, I mean, I was on the roll. I already started the season. Like, I, can I stop now? Yeah. But, you know what I mean? But uh, 
it was it's a damn shame that that's how she really feels, man. It's just like it's hard for me to look at Seinfeld the same after Michael Richards went on that racist rant when he was at I think the last well, factory in LA. Yeah. But I think also too with that, you you also have to keep in mind that it was just that individual. Now I can see if Jerry had co-signed with what it was that Michael Richards said, then it would be something more, you know, it'll be something more conflicted to go against. But, you know, what what it is that we're taught and what it is that that we, you know, try and 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 lead on example by is you can never let one person, you know, just ruin everything for everyone else. And then, you know, as you were saying how Sarah Gilbert just went on and was like, hey, she said that shit. <laughs> that's not that's not how we feel. You know, that was her, that was her thoughts, that was her opinions. I don't agree with the shit either. Like, if you have people, if you have more people who are coming out and doing that and saying that, I would say you would need to let them people live. Now, the ones who are going around and, and just saying nothing but all-out, disrespectful, super racist-ass shit, don't let up. Keep a foot at their goddamn neck. Just, I, just keep it there. I feel you, like, bro. Because what, what it is that I am seeing now, especially since he got into office, is the same way... People are looking at school shootings as being a part of the norm. Now it seems like this this whole thing within racism being not only resurfaced, but now everyone is seeing it, and it's now becoming like some part of the norm. And yeah, that shit don't cut it for me. Like, I mean, I'm the most. Yeah, I'm the most respectful person you could possibly run into. I will laugh, joke, this, that, and the third. But don't get it twisted for one minute to think that if you say something that I will find all out racist, wrong, and almost from a stereotypical point of view, do not think that I will just stand or sit idly by and and giggle stupid at it. Nope, I'm going to shut that shit all the way down. I'm with you on that. All the way down. I'm with you on that. I had a conversation with with Ben today about that shit, man. And I was like, it's crazy, bro. And it makes me so mad because it makes you look at people a certain way. And I told her, I said, man, I've been lucky in life. I've been blessed in life. I've had, let's just, when when you talk about white people, I've had positive experiences 99.9% 99.9% of the time, at least to my face, with people I know who've been, just been in my life and been parts of my life and who I've met in the past and who've looked out for me, who I've looked out for, 99.9% of the time I've had positive positive uh, interactions and all exactly. that shit. Still got mentors. One time for my man uh, Jimmy Thunder, my homeboy Brad. Like, I could still hit them up any, any day of the week if I, hey, I got some shit going on, bro. I need to talk to somebody. I guarantee they're going to pick up the phone. Or they're going to respond back or let me know when I can get with them. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's not always money, help me move, shit like that. They've taught me shit via leadership, how you should treat people and how you should expect to be treated. And how you make sure people look good that I can, that I'll never forget. And that I always appreciate. Right. And just people I've met, friends I've had in my life, just, you know, just chance encounters I had with people that made me feel like, bro, we are really all one people. There are things that separate us that we're trying to get over right now. And I feel like maybe 50, 40 years in the future we'll, we'll get to that point. I hope it's that soon. But there's still some shit we got to iron out. And that's on both ends. And I'm going to be 100, but that's on both ends. It's just with this shit now, it was like people getting a little bit too big for their britches. And too much is being allowed and it's like recreating that same, that same pocket where it's, hey, it's okay. It's okay, brother. Be like that. It's okay. Be this way. Fuck them. And I think that pocket, unfortunately, is only is getting bigger. And it's going to be up to the people that want to be around everybody, you know what I'm saying, to to yeah. make sure we, we put a stop to it. Or at least let the motherfucker just be over there. 
stay your ass on the fringes. Don't don't infiltrate with regular society because you can't handle being around different types of people. Stay your ass over there and do what you do over there. Don't come over here with us. We like to be around everybody. Don't come to the party. Yes. Stay the fuck at home. Please, no. Yeah, don't just stay the fuck at home. Because I'm not with that shit. I got to make sure my daughter knows, hey, you're going to be friends with everybody. I'm not going to force you to, and I'm, but I'm not going to keep you from anybody else either. You just got to know, like, hey, there's a history here that you need to be aware of. And then once we, you know, we have that established, we go from there and we move on. And we go get beer and eat pizza. That's just how I feel about the shit. But, I mean, that's just... My particular case, when I was over in Japan, it's get go to the sushi go round, get some get some sake, and you know what I'm saying. Chill, yeah. Come pie, my brother. Come pie for real. I'm trying to Shout tell you, like I, yeah, you ain't the only one been overseas. I definitely sat at a <laughs> me and my Filipino partner definitely sat down in Australia with this strange Australian man and had a whole hour long conversation about race. We was drunk as shit. But but the point got across. It's like we just people, man. This man had to be damn near sixty years old and sitting there and got us fucked up in uh, Australia. Just talking about how how he doesn't understand how different places you go, the race thing is so sensitive. And it's kind of like, bro, you got you kind of got to be in the states. You kind of got to be in the states because, and I'm I'm not saying just that because there's definitely bananas being thrown at soccer players over in Europe. But for us here in the states, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But was that it, man? Um, I think I had um, I had a question. Um, well, one one thing I wanted to say for anybody listening to this, listen, bro, for people who are involved in the military or have past experience with the military, let people live. If people want to tell you fucking Happy Memorial Day, we know you're not dead. You're clearly alive. They may be misunderstanding the holiday, but hey, give me my thank yous and shit while I'm here. Don't wait till I'm dead. I appreciate it. If you tell me or anybody who's been involved or is currently involved in the, in the military, Happy Memorial Day, somebody like that should accept it. I've got close friends and close ties. My father's a veteran. I got my, my best friend who I'm on the phone with is a veteran. got plenty of friends who've been in the service. So if you tell one of them Happy Memorial Day, even though it's for those that we lost, it's like it's... You're good. Don't let some asshole come to you. Well, it's time. It's for the people that passed. Like, hey, man, chill the fuck out. We let, we, let people we respect go the military. The same thing. Yes. Because we go through the same thing that they go through, and we dealt with the same thing that we, that, that their families are dealing with. Like, true story. I had a, I, I had a, a leader, a, a mentor, um, when I got to my first duty station. And he ended up passing away the weekend of Memorial Day. Like, that, that, that what, Tuesday, Wednesday? We were, we were in, um, we were in the S shop. We had the craziest off-the-wall conversation. But, you know, military personnel, we always have crazy-ass conversations. And, and basically, we were talking about uh, white cranch strawberry cocktail juice from Ocean Spray. It's funny as hell, but this was the last conversation that we had. And he was just talking about how great it was. And he didn't know that that juice was actually available on the base. And I was like, you know what? When we go on lunch, when we break for child, I'm going to bring you back a bottle. Brought him a bottle and the whole day was just on cloud nine for him from there on. And then we, we, you know, we shot the shit, told a couple of more jokes, this, that, and the third. We left. He uh, got on his bike. He was riding his bike home. Someone didn't um, pay attention to him riding his bicycle. He had um, all of the PPE, everything that he needed to be seen. And the driver still didn't see him, ended up hitting him. He fought for his life that whole night and passed away that following morning Damn. before Memorial Day. And it, it, it rocked us. When I say it felt like I lost a family member, it truly felt like I lost a family member. That weekend before we even took our... Um, 
uh, on Memorial Day uh, 96, because it was with the Marines, um, basically we, we, we stood outside. We had a um, half, uh, half mass ceremony for them. Um, we had a memorial for him uh, that afternoon. Um, saw his family, you know, sent them our condolences, gave them whatever it is that they needed for the um, for the services and whatnot. But that weekend, we we spent that weekend just reflecting on all of the crazy things and the funny things that he's done, like. I can honestly say now, because of this dude, I know how to tie knots that those who've been on ships know and recognize. And I never touched the ship. My whole time in, I never touched the ship. Besides the training, never touched the ship. But I can get you some knots like I've been on them, and it's all because of him. It's real. I mean, yes, it's a real subject, man. But people just, you know... If you're going to take the time out to appreciate those who serve, you're not wrong. You just, you saw an appreciation. Like, Memorial Day is for those who passed, and Veterans Day is for those who served and who are now on the civilian side of it. You're not wrong. If you want to tell somebody active duty, happy Veterans Day, they're going to be a veteran one day. You're going to tell somebody happy Memorial Day, luckily they ain't passed away yet. So just, if you want to appreciate the, the guys and guys in the military, do it. Don't let some asshole tell you different. Say, hey, I appreciate you correcting me, but I'm going to do this shit anyway. I'm showing my appreciation. And then move on about your day. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you, bro, real quick before I get here and watch these fucking finals at. It's coming on in a few yeah. minutes. Uh, you're in Florida, Orlando, from Duval County. Anybody listening to this podcast, who should they be listening to from my area that makes music? Let's say specifically in Duval because I don't know people in Orlando like that. Sorry. Yeah, it, it, you can do Orlando too. You can do some Orlando sound. people, bro. Just <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a couple of people in Orlando that I, that I, like I rocks with heavy. It's it's a couple of them that I rock with. Um, it's some who's still on the bubble and and whatnot. And it's it's a lot of producers, most mm. of them that I rock with in Orlando. That's that's heavy and whatnot. Um, like my homeboy uh, Brimstone, he a dope producer. My homie, uh, Super Cool. And uh, the funny thing about Super Cool is Super Cool ended up producing songs for Kevin Gates. He got two songs that he produced for Kevin Gates. Okay. Um, It's an artist out of Orlando um, by the name Bez Believe. Um, Okay. He's he's a pretty dope artist. Um, Had the chance of working with him, uh, basically interning for him. Uh, And then... um, this uh my homie he he was in Orlando but now he's out in uh, Daytona making making noise for himself uh Cutter that, okay that, poof. and he from the NO so <laughs> oh, just with that he that he makes yeah sense. he yeah he brings something serious um the R&B uh singer that I just recently shameless plug released um Mimi Janit that's that's how you pronounce her name Mimi Janit, uh, she's dope. Um, an R&B artist from out here, um, a dude uh, G Five. He raps out here in Orlando. But as far as like Duval is concerned, my hometown, our hometown. Let's see. If you ain't on Swords, you are wrong. Yeah. For Point real. blank. Period. If you if you ain't on Swords, you're wrong. I don't want to hear anything about. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear you. Period. Uh, Cheech or Chi, that's that's what it is. She's going by now, but she would be another one. Um, who else? Uh, Chulo, young Chulo. Okay. Dude, there be snapping. Dude, there's a beast for real. Um, I know a lot of people. Again, not so much on the production side, but you'll be surprised at how many people are getting dope behind tracks from this producer out of Jacksonville, Taz Taylor. Like, there's a lot of people who know who he is, and it's a lot of people who don't know exactly who he is. But if if you're aware of internet money, then 
you know who Taz Taylor is. And Word. he is making some phenomenal moves. Yeah. For, for everything that he went through, he's he making some phenomenal moves. Um, who else? Who else from Jacksonville? Um... She needs to come back out and do some more songs, but uh, it was another R and B artist that I was working with, Amanda J. Okay, uh, she's one. Um, well, I think he calling himself Primo Wolf now. Primo Wolf. He was going by uh, Jordan Hill or, or Javel. Um, that's another dope artist. One K Buck. He a dope artist as well, um, out of Jacksonville, and uh, my homegirl Anchor. And she's just been, yeah, she she's been on she's been in a category to where no one has yet to touch her just because of the fact of a little known fact about her. If there is anybody out there who's listening and they're they're fans of Trina, it was a song that that Trina has, um, what was it called? Red Bottoms, Long Hill Red Bottoms. She wrote that, or she had uh, some contributions to the penmanship okay. for that song. There you go. Cleaned um, it up. Cleaned it up real good, yeah. there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Big Big J, um, a dope, dope, soulful singer. This this dude here, oh man, you 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 know he's uh he been on weeks. He been on weeks. Uh, oh, okay, I know. What you're he had a couple about. of features on weeks. Yeah, yeah and yeah. and then not even not even to mention weeks. Our brother weeks. Oh yeah, all the time. Welcome that, New Jack City. That all the time. Weeks, man. My brother. Yes. I, I want to get him on here. Hopefully, if this you know all goes well, but us recording this and yes, you guys are hearing this. I want to do this again. I had fun doing this. It's probably the funnest I've had doing this shit. I like doing it by myself, but it was much better with the homie. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. I got a minute till this game come on. But big shout out to Sky Zoo. Big shout out to Sky Zoo, artist out of New York City, who's been getting it crowded oh, yeah. for a long time. He's been on some Salvation. Dope, he's been on some I love dope it. shit. He's been on he's on the song. If you are a fan of Ninth Wonder, shout out to Lil Brother one more time. If you're a fan of Ninth Wonder, he's on Ninth Wonder's album, a song called the album's called Wonder Years. The song is called Hearing the Melody. He has the first verse. Everybody else, everybody on that on that fucking song, ripped the they ripped the song up. The whole song is fire, but it's called "Hearing the Melody," produced by Knife Wonder, featuring Skyzu with the first verse, Fashan with the second verse, and King Mads with the third verse. It's probably, it may or may not be the best song on the album on the hip hop side, but it's a really dope album. And um, he has an album out right now called "Celebration of Us," and I reached out to him and he let me use his song. Everybody's fine on my last podcast. So appreciate him reaching back and telling me that I can go ahead and do that. So shout out to Sky Zoo, man. Go get the album Celebration of Us. And you know, get your brain cells back, man. <laughs> get them back. From listening. From yeah, getting your Gucci gang on. Definitely be a big thing. From getting your Gucci gang on. But hey, um, hey man, for the homie Trent Brooks, it's blackout. We out, man. Learn some shit tomorrow. You did learn today. Be better tomorrow than you were today. And all of the good shit. I still got merch, man. No playing this ride. dot What's the other shit I was gonna say? Oh yeah, you want to contact me? No playing this ride at gmail. dot com. All lowercase. Twitter. No play two four seven. Capital N. Lowercase o. Capital P. L A Y two four motherfucking seven. There's also a Facebook page. No playing this ride. Hey, Brooks, you want to drop some uh, info if they want to get at you for beats and mixing and all that other rapper musical shit you do? Why, certainly. Uh, you want to get at me? You can get at me at Ghost Rider Influence Music. One word. It's spelled G-H-O-S-T-R-I-D-A. Influence Music at gmail.com. You can catch me on Twitter at Brooks on the Beat, the normal way. And uh, you can actually listen to a couple of my beats on uh, Brooks on the Beat at SoundCloud. Um, I do have a website that is being developed right now. I do have more catalogs and, and beats and things like that coming out. You can follow me on Instagram, Ghost Rider Influence Music, and uh, just hit the DMs. I send out catalogs and some beats if you wanted to buy some beats if you own the rap thing. But be advised, I don't do this as a hobby. This is a livelihood that I'm getting into. 
So don't be coming trying to lowball me or try and get a five finger discount. You'll get a one finger discount. And I wave it proudly if you even try to come my way with that mess.